Yeah, um, that's a fantastic question, and I think it's one that, that gets tossed a lot, around a lot and has in many ways created a lot of ambiguity around, around the issue. Um, marine debris is a term that has largely been around for the past three decades, um, you know, starting back in 1986 when Ocean Conservancy started the International Coastal Cleanup, um, as well as NOAA in their work on the issue of marine debris um, in, in the past decades as well. And marine debris really addresses all anthropogenic derived debris and or trash that is in our ocean and washes onto our shores. So um, much of that is plastic and I think over the years we have seen that the majority of marine debris is in fact made of plastic, but there are other forms of marine debris out there as well that do pose their own types of threats. Um, you know, pressure treated lumber, um, large fishing nets that may not be synthetic in nature, and other forms of debris. So, so marine debris certainly has a place um, in, in our vernacular, but I think, you know, over the years looking at international coastal cleanup data, certainly the findings of, of Charlie Moore's initial expedition and, and subsequent expeditions in the North Pacific, Gyre, and gyres around the world, um, we have seen that the majority of items out there are, are plastic, and especially when we start looking at the implications of those debris items, um, we, we see that those that pose the greatest threat both to individual marine organisms as well as large-scale marine ecosystems are plastic. And particularly as we as we think about the term plastic pollution, I think why it's such a good one is, is it's not just talking about plastic in the ocean. It is talking about the entire life cycle of plastic from when it's first made from individual resin pellets all the way down through all the pathways until it becomes you know plastic pollution in the ocean and and along that entire vector from initial manufacturing to end of life in the ocean if it ends up there you know there are myriad ways where, where those plastic items can, can be disrupted for us to address this issue um, so I, I do think as our times have evolved I, I think plastic pollution is certainly becoming the more common term um, but, but but that does not mean we should disregard other forms of marine debris as well that are out there and, and do pose their own respective challenges. Well, it's a complicated issue, and there are an awful lot of different stakeholders mm -hmm. who need to be involved in addressing the issues. Uh, plastic in itself is not bad, but plastic pollution is bad, uh, and there are certain uses of plastic that we feel, I feel, we just should not be doing as, as human beings. But uh, when you look at the marine debris issue, if you just focus on that, it's an international issue. No one owns the oceans, but everyone has a part in contributing to their health and well-being. So it's a very, very complicated issue. You know, when I think of plastic pollution, I think of plastic in the ocean, but I also think of all the different ways that plastic is toxic and pollutes um, from manufacturing where you know water is polluted and air is polluted from the chemicals in plastics to um, chemicals that can leach out of the plastics that we use um, those are forms of plastic pollution as well and I know a lot of us are focusing on the ocean um, but for me it's important to reduce the amount of plastic that we're using in the first place because of all the different types of plastic pollution not just in the ocean. <laughs> 